So hello everybody. Uh, hopefully you have uh, successfully installed Mount Wizard and I would like to move now a little bit on how to make the first configuration of Mount Wizard uh, that you can use it uh, with your mount and your, your camera. So first of all starting Mount Wizard again and you have on the top the status part which uh, devices are already uh, configured and run. So first of all the mount itself. So the default configuration is to use pair of five files uh, um, uh, 10 micron driver. Then you can configure a dome, um, the, the stick station stick, you have the uh, open weather and you need for doing the imaging uh, secrets generator pro. And you can configure the parts under the settings tab. And there you have the ASCOM drivers for the setup. So on the mount side, I've chosen the Freifalz 10 Micron GM telescope driver. And of course, you have to set the properties like the IP address. And uh, uh, for the setting, I stay with Sync's Align model. Um, I don't need a setting to change to Refine model because that's done internally on Mount Wizard. So you can stay on the safe side just with doing that Sync. We don't need any refraction updates because that's done uh, by Mount Wizard itself. And uh, uh, in terms of uh, choosing the epoch doesn't make uh, uh, any difference which one you choose uh, because the uh, communication of Mount Wizard is directly with the mount so there is no use of any uh, any information on that side. So please uncheck the refraction continuously uh, and uncheck the time sinks rolling average uh, and uh, leave that all open. Uh, if you would like to do you can enter your scope and other parts uh, for uh, Sequence Generator Pro, uh, but for Mount Wizard, we really don't need that. For the dome, uh, I leave it out because I don't own one, but as well, you can just choose one of them. So if you have a stick, you can also enable the stick station. Uh, you have to choose the ASCOM driver. Look for the properties that you really widely set your COM interface and if you put it there you see stick is going to be green. Weather same part you need an API key uh, for open weather you can access it on the website shouldn't be any problem. And last one uh, sequence generator pro uh, you need that so I have to start it, and once um, uh, Sequence Generator Pro is starting, uh, this part also went to be. So now we are ready to to start with modeling. And last point would be to select the selected directory where you would like to store the images, which is quite easy. Put it there. And now I would like to show you some other parts of that uh, uh, tooling just so to get a little bit used to that. So first of all you have the main screen, you have the status of the different um, devices you can use. You get the status of the mount itself, my is currently parked. You have a message board if there are some errors occurring that you get the information. You have the shutdown quit uh, button where you shut down the mount and leaving the tooling. Save and quit just means save the data and uh, uh, leave the mount on. Then you have uh, the pointing coordinates of your mounting, which is quite similar to what you can see on your, for example, virtual keypad. If you go there, you have that the same numbers there. Um, so you can replace the keypad by, by Mount Wizard as well. And you get some information about 
tracking fluid rates and so on. On the right side, you have some defined positions. Um, these are additional positions you can slew the mount to. Um, so they're added parking position, if you would like to, uh, to say. And how to define them, um, I come to that point later on. Then you can enable disable tracking uh, and change the speed. Um, and uh, for sure doing the parking and you can stop the mount. So uh, these are basically uh, the features uh, which are standard. Next step is the modeling and refine part. So there's all things which are done for doing models. Um, first part is about um, the base points. Um, you can split uh, the first three points as base points uh, where you get uh, the first model done. And then you can refine the model uh, with refinement points um, uh, to improve the accuracy of your model. On the third side you have some general points I would like to use and as you see I try to make tooltips to all buttons, knobs and features so if you have any questions just try out uh, to get uh, some more information out of the tooltip. Uh, this should help you. Uh, once you would like to start with the modeling, um, you can open the coordinate window. So it's a, an additional window where you get your um, star set up. Uh, if you've chosen the horizon map, uh, as I did with the first configuration, that's shown as well. And uh, if you have a points file, like from Model Maker, you can just show the base points or you can show the refinement points uh, in that map. And you have also a message window uh, once the mount is uh, doing the modeling. Uh, you get the status on that side. So that's the, the first step you need for doing a model. So to step in and don't make a real run, I'm going to settings and go to the simulation. So I put a telescope simulator on that side and I go for Secret Generator Pro and go for the simulator camera and connect the camera as well just for the purpose of doing um, a quick demo on that side. Now I'm going back to the modeling part and clear the models in the window, the points and we start on that side from scratch. that things up. So, first of all, I take the base points uh, out of the file, or you just can generate automatically the base points uh, just by entering altitude and azimut. So I normally do that automatically because I don't want to store all that files. So I put the base point there so they are equally distributed and uh, you don't have to keep a, a file in mind. Once you've did that, just run the base model and uh, mount wizard start doing the slowing of the telescope. Taking the images with the Sigrun Generator Pro, plate solving it and putting the information to the mount. Okay, now you have the base model finished. You've got three points. And normally you are on the way doing, uh, for example, polar alignment or other things you would like to do. Or, second part, you would like to move on with the refinement part. So for that reason, I clear the window again up. Um, same story again. Uh, but you have more options to generate your, your points you would like to do for modeling. First of all, if you have files, you just can use it, uh, like I have to do it that way. Uh, there's a, another uh, possibility if you would like to use just a grid of points, uh, you can put the points there 
uh, and you can change the numbers of rows. So in addition, I added a feature uh, which is called point cloud, uh, and you get a normal one and a dense one. And point cloud means that you distribute that uh, model points uh, along of, uh, to greater circles. So your mount only moves uh, along the uh, right ascension and uh, goes uh, part by part in declination up. So you have the movement of the mount uh, according to your normal movement slowing of the mount uh, for the imaging later on. So I check the point cloud and you see that circles uh, you normally get like the mount would move afterwards. It's split the east and the west side um, so that you can have uh, a model built uh, on each pier side. You can go for a more dense part and you see that the numbers exceed the 100 uh, the mount normally can take. And that's related that you normally lose some points uh, which are too low below your horizon. And there's an easy way to delete all points below, below the horizon map. Just click it and um, uh, the points are out of sight. So uh, now it's easy to, to run the refinement. I go for the uh, lower numbers. Uh, as you can see, you have uh, the points on both sides, so normally uh, the mount would flip from the left to the right, and you can sort it at the points for east west as well. So you get in uh, ascending um, altitude and uh, a split in east and west part of the points. And we then ju just run the refinement model. So, we finished doing the modeling, so we have 25 points modeled. Um, we've seen that all of the points are modeled, and uh, what Mount Wizard does on the, on the same time, uh, Mount Wizard also stores all the data what, uh, uh, what you experienced during the modeling run, uh, like the errors and the pointing. So, um, the mount is finished right there. And you can go a step further for the model analyze. And um, as you did that so far, uh, we you have uh, done the refinement run for that model. Um, so the numbers are placed uh, um, directly in, so you don't have to take care. Or you can choose later on a file. And you can open the analyze window. So now you can check uh, how your model run was can look for the deck error or the right ascension error. You can discover different ways of how the setup is. Um, you can check uh, on the polar points. So you see that circle, what's happening here around. You get the errors done uh, for the model points. So you can just check how neat and clean your model was at the end. Now I would like to show you some other small features uh, from Mount uh, Wizard. If you go for the Side Mount tab, uh, you can see the information uh, which is uh, coming from your mount about the stored light long elevation. You get a, a local zero time. Your limits are setting to slewing. You get a feedback of the motor temp of your uh, right ascension and uh, declination axis. You get uh, the weather information. Uh, from all the open weather. You get uh, the refraction, what is set in the mount. You can switch on uh, auto refraction. So that was the reason why I, uh, um, I set uh, to disable that on uh, PS driver. Um, I'm doing that uh, correction a little bit different. So an extended version. I doing the refraction correction not only when the mount is uh, uh, slewing, but I also check because I have the link to the Secret Generator Pro uh, while the, the camera is idle, so it doesn't do uh, image integration. 
And so in that case, uh, I also update the refraction status. Um, and that makes um, a lot of sense, uh, because if you're running large sequences on uh, SG Pro, um, you normally have for longer times, because I don't use dithering right now, uh, we don't have any slew command in. So that would lead into hours of time where you don't update the refraction parameters, um, and that uh, would be a bad thing to do. Um, because you lose uh, accuracy. Uh, as I said, you can add the stick, and I just would like to check that. Okay, COM1 is still there, uh, and you get the stick enabled. And if you look for the mount, so last small goodie I would like to show you uh, if you go back to the coordinate window and then move that. The pointer a little bit outside uh, the tracking pointer, and um, I've showed you that there is an option show tracking widget in coordinate. If you enable them, that uh, you get the path of your telescope um, uh, uh, over time, and there will be. Uh, um, tracking widget which tells you um, the minutes until um, the mount would flip and also the time um, at which hour um, the time uh, the, the mount will flip uh, to the other side. So you can check that. Um, it's not ideally done right right there because I'm using the simulation uh, but that really takes into account all the data which derives from the mount. So we have 125 minutes uh, uh, for the flip. So you get all your information in. And also you get a good uh, idea about if the uh, tracking really uh, would hit uh, your horizon, uh, some trees, whatever you put in. And I missed one option for doing the refinement part. And that's a feature uh, if you would like to get higher accuracy on the path uh, of a chosen object. And that should be normally the object you have on your pointer. You can generate a DSO track as well. So you get a list of points which follow your path of the object you would like to observe. And you can do modeling exactly on that positions. So hopefully you get the best modeling exactly along that path and adding model points uh, to improve your unguided uh, accuracy of the mount. So at that point, hopefully I got some ideas about uh, mount wizard and what mount wizard does. Um, hopefully there will be some, some videos later on and um, I definitely would like to show you that in a running environment uh, that you a real a real run on uh, uh, on doing the modeling uh, as soon as the weather gets a little bit better. So thanks guys and have a lot of fun on, um, on doing imaging and modeling and uh, if you're using mount with us. Uh, please let me know and uh, if there are any wishes or problems uh, please put it on the uh, forum on Micron so there is a thread uh, running uh, about mount uh, wizard and just put it there. So thank you.